Hello, this is Sickle Yield, and I'm here to talk to you about using your new Shackled 2, available in my store from Daz3D.com. Here you can see I have Genesis 2 female with Victoria 6 morphs, and the Char Hair and Mystic Giselle clothing, also from the Daz store. So I'm going to make sure that she's selected, and I'm going to go to my Content Library tab over here on the left, and I will navigate to Props, Sickle Yield, Shackled 2, and Full Loading Sets. And I can select a full loading set from the G2F folder. I'm going to use the Change to Doric Alter option. And since she is selected, when I click on that, it applies both the pose and the props to my scene. And the props are parented to G2F, so if I select her and move her with the Transform widget, which you can see here, it has these three colored arrows. And I move those back and forth. I'm moving her and the items move with her so they can be placed easily in your scene. That's fairly straightforward. And as you can see, the props fit fine on the Victoria 6 morph because it's basically the same size as base Genesis 2 female. It's not taller or substantially thicker. Where we're going to require more adjustment is when you use a larger item or character such as Raw Art's Massive for Genesis 2 male, shown here. He's a big fellow. The genre undergarments that he's wearing are also available from my store. And of course, Massive is from Raw Art store, and I highly recommend it. Now, if I select him and go to the G2M presets in the Full Loading Sets folder, and I click on Break Chains 02, it applies the pose and the smart props to him, but as you can see, there is clipping in the wrist areas because they were made on the base G2M and he's a big fellow. So I'm going to zoom in on this and I'm just going to select the single shackle with chain prop by right clicking on it and then left clicking on that option. And I'm going to scale and adjust it using a combination of these widgets and the parameters tab. You can swap widgets up here in your bar at the top of your screen. Sometimes parameters are easier, sometimes widgets are easier. It just depends on your preference and your workflow and your specific scene. All right, that looks better. Now I'll just go look at this other one. And I will scale it up similarly. And the larger your character is, and more importantly, the thicker that the character is, the more you will need to do this sort of thing. There we go. Little more adjustment in this direction. Little bit more scaling. And there we are. Looks much better. Now, you can see that I've got the broken chain link bit parented to the end of the shackle with chain here. And you can see that the chains are already posed. If you want a different pose for the chain, there are a number of ways that you can do that. The first and easiest is with the pose controls that each chain has. Now when I've got the single shackle with chain selected, I can go to the pose controls over here in the parameters tab. You can see that the pose uses some of those controls already. I'll just zero those out. And you can dial these in and move your chain around with all of the links moving at the same time very easily. When you want to refine a pose or you want to drag the chain end to a specific place, you can do that very easily using a couple of different techniques. There's inverse kinematics and there's multi-selection. Let's address inverse kinematics first. I will right click on the single shackle with chain and down here you can see that I have enabled IK and you can use Control k to toggle that on and off as well. Now with IK turned on, I can select this last link in the chain here. Over in my scene tab, you can see that's link 25 there. And when I grab this in my scene with the left click of the mouse, and I drag it all around with a widget, it moves. Unfortunately, you can see it's also dragging the base, so we need to pin the base. So Control-Z to remove that movement. 
And now I will select the shackle base. And you can see this thumbtack appears in your 3D window. I'll click on that thumbtack, click pin translation and pin rotation. Now, when I grab that last link in the chain and drag it around, it does not drag the base out of position. This technique is your best friend when you're posing these long chain items. Now, sometimes that can give a little bit wonky results, as you can see here, if I'm close to the origin. So, in some cases, it's better to use multi-select posing for greater precision, and I will now demonstrate that technique as well. Over in your Scene tab, with the shackle expanded, you can see all of these links. I will left-click on link 01 in the Scene tab, then I shift-click on, let's say, link 10. Now, links 1 through 10 are selected. See them all selected there. And I will go to my Parameters tab, click on the Display Options up here, and I will make sure that Consolidate Properties is turned on, and Display Separate Items is turned off. And that ensures that I have these nice dials, and one of these dials now moves all of those links together, all of the ones that are selected. So you can move small segments of the chain, or the entire chain, very quickly. And you can achieve some very complex poses this way with very little loss of time. It's very efficient. This gives you a lot more options with not just with these big super rigs, but also with Genesis 2 Mail. You can use it to select his leg and move both joints at the same time if you wish, or basically any other item that's in a hierarchy of bones. All right, those techniques should give you a good start on using Shackled 2 for Genesis 2. Thank you very much, and happy rendering!